Our news is brought to you by Alive. Believe in best. Coming up tonight in our news, a shocking incident involving an immigration officer leaves a woman in hospital. OPM insists the gospel group led by the press secretary performed in Dubai for free. 7,500 people benefited from free government testing and education officials tore several schools ahead of Monday's reopening. Welcome to Our News and thank you for joining us. I'm Kyle Joaquin. An immigration officer is one of two men in police custody after a woman was brutally beaten early this morning. A video of the attack has gone viral, prompting community activists to call for action. No, they beat her, they drag her, they can't kind of beat her. What are we, what are we doing? Die. The nearly two minute video shows the agonizing abuse one woman endured at the hands of two men. In it, the men are seen hitting the woman before the attack is stopped by others. After a few seconds go by and the woman manages to prop herself up with her hands, she's kicked down by one of the men. The woman is said to be in a hospital in serious condition. Assistant Superintendent Audley Peter said the attack happened just after 4 this morning, but he would not provide any other specifics. He said two men are in police custody. One of them is an immigration officer. Um, if he is charged, um, then obviously he would be interdicted. If he's not charged, it still means that as an immigration officer, we have to determine whether or not he would have breached any of our disciplinary uh, procedures, etc. practices. The gruesome video once again shining a light on the troubling issue of violence against women. It's just horrendous to see what's going on. Um, unfortunately, women have been the victim of violence for, for too long. Crisis Center Director Sandra Dean Patterson says what's happening in the country is horrifying. On Tuesday night, a woman was tragically killed after being caught in a hail of bullets as she walked into a prayer meeting. I think it speaks to, to our desensitization with regard to violence. And again, I think we have to look at what's happening in our homes, of how our children are being raised, um, the, the exposure to, to video games, to movies, to lyrics, to me, all of those things come together to make for a desensitization towards the person and a, and a lack of ability to feel for the person who you're hurting or shooting or whatever. And so I think it calls for all of us to come together and deal and respond and react to this issue. Dean Patterson says, unfortunately, she's been making the call for years for government after government to address the issue of violence against women and children. She said with so many women in parliament now, she hopes there will finally be some definitive action. We have the opportunity to deal with it and address it, but we won't do it. You know, we do not seem to have the political will, the national will, the community will to address it. The Davis administration did not pay a choir led by OPM Press Secretary Clint Watson to participate in Bahamas National Day at Expo 2020 in Dubai, according to Director of Communications in the Office of the Prime Minister, Latre Ramming, who once again addressed criticisms over the trip. Jasmine Brown has more. The Office of the Prime Minister Communications Director sought to give more insight into that controversial Dubai trip as he was asked to explain the selection process behind who did and didn't make the cut to perform. Ramming says costs was a major factor. This process was stirred through a organizing committee uh, for the Bahamas National Day. There were several components that influenced the decision-making process. One, costs and size of the delegation. According to the Office of the Prime Minister, $1 million was budgeted for the trip, down from the $1.7 million it said was budgeted by the former Minnis administration. Ramming says due to the cut in the budget, there had to be a cut of paid performers. He also said Shabak, a choir led by OPM Press Secretary Clint Watson, was one of the acts that went free of charge. The Royal Bahamas Police Force, the Bahamas All-Star Band and the Shabak Choir went free of charge. Controversy has continued to swirl around the Dubai trip. News that a delegation of more than 100 traveled to Dubai for the event, while the Bahamas continues to suffer from an economic crisis brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic, provoked the ire of many over the weekend. And while the amount of money spent was one concern, the primary concern of many was the quality of Bahamian offerings at the expo and how performers were chosen. 
In addition to addressing those criticisms, Ramming also shut down social media reports that part of the delegation was stuck in Dubai due to cancelled flights. Due to roll out of 5G technology in certain cities that impacted air transportation and many airlines around the world cancelled their flights. Uh, the, air, the, the flight arrangement from Dubai to Orlando was impacted. The government of the Bahamas uh, rerouted, which it was a significant amount of individuals, rerouted them, and had made some adjustment to their travels. What I can say is the group uh, landed in New York last night. Uh, they um, take off from New York to Miami today, when they, where they will return to Nassau tonight. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. More than 7,500 people have been tested through the government's free COVID-19 testing pilot program. According to Office of the Prime Minister Press, Secretary, Press Officer Gillian Gray, who also revealed hundreds of people have tested positive. 567 of those presented positive. The Ministry of Education announcing that students across the country will return to campuses for face-to-face -face learning on Monday. Megan Shepard joined education officials on a brief tour of schools this morning. In anticipation of the reopening of schools, Minister of State for Education Zane Lightborn led principals and union officials on a tour of schools on New Providence to assess their readiness for hybrid learning. He says he is satisfied that campuses are ready to receive students. We went to C.V. Bethel, Doris Johnson, Sybil Strawn, and Eva Hilton. Lightborn added education officials have been working closely with the Ministry of Health to establish new safety protocols, including temperature checks, sanitization stations, and nurses on campus. There's an isolation room that is different. The isolation room is supposed to be an area that the nurses can do their, their assessments safely by not exposing others to the, the person who they may have suspected has COVID or, or maybe have needed to have isolation or have been exposed to COVID. Now the state minister adds that there may also be some changes to the curriculum going forward, reducing the number of courses offered to students. He says the goal is to allow students the opportunity to focus on core key subjects that will help in their overall development. We are strengthening the technical component, which is my portfolio. And we want to make sure that the school will have not only technical teachers and other teachers that have to perform duties to make sure that students get quality education, but students have catch-up programs where they can get those things that they would have lost. And we may have to cut out the number of subjects that we offer students in certain cases to make sure we focus on literacy. Former educator and executive of the Bahamas Union of Teachers, Quentin LaRota said he believes the delay in resuming face-to-face -face learning caused many societal ills. He welcomed the reopening of schools. The loss of education, the abuse of the children, the lack of proper, proper socialization, the inability of parents to find uh, proper care for their kids when they have to go to work and so forth, uh, the psychological impact. So it was a negative situation all around. And um, the risk reward, I think it's, it's better to have school face to face for the country and, 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 and for the nation. Uh, we were able to do it successfully in Grand Bahama. Reporting for our news, I'm Megan Shepard. Cloudy conditions continue tonight. Meteorologist Greg Thompson joins us with a first look at weather. Good evening, Greg. Thanks, Kyle. Our first look at weather tonight is being brought to you by Ports International, trusted medical supplies for a better quality of life. A warm evening outside our studios compared to the last couple of mornings. 74 outside our studios right now with a few clouds. Temperatures did manage to get up to near the 60 degree mark early this morning. Winds are out of the east southeast at six miles per hour on your feet. It's like temperature, a very warm and humid 76. Satellite view, we are still under the influence of that high pressure ridge. We do have some moisture moving out of the Western Caribbean across Cuba and into the Northwest Palmas. So we could see isolated shower, or maybe even a thunderstorm tonight through tomorrow. And that front boundary to the east of the island has lifted towards the north, but it is staying east of us. Watching a front across the Southeast United States, we expect that again here by the weekend. That's your first look at weather. Your extended forecast is still to come. Still to come, beach towers to be transformed into somewhere else. And the new Bamsey chairman says he met it in shambles. Find out more after this. 
Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight. COVID-19 remains a serious threat. Coronavirus COVID-19 has disrupted our economy, tourism industry, educational system, and put our healthcare facilities and professionals on high alert. Are you prepared? Do you have all the facts? Stay tuned to this network for the very latest news and information on this global pandemic. Grammy winner and noted producer Pharrell Williams and Miami nightlife guru David Grutman are set to partner on a $100 million investment that will see the beach towers at Atlantis turn into somewhere else. And yes, that is the name, somewhere else. It'll feature 400 rooms and suites along with top-tier dining venues, multiple pools and recreation areas, and luxury amenities. Tourism Minister Chester Cooper is sharing his excitement for the project. I'm excited about what's going to happen there. It seems a well-thought-out, well-considered brand that will cater more to an entertainment, art, uh, cultured niche. And we're looking forward to this development. I am exceptionally pleased that this is going to be a $100 million investment. It's good for the product. Williams and Grutman have already had major success collaborating on projects in Miami. Somewhere else is set to open in 2024. Well, the new executive chairman of the Bahamas Agriculture and Marine Science Institute is accusing the former government of leaving Bamsey in shambles. He vowed to make some major changes this year. Cale Campbell reports. When he took office in October, Bahamas Agriculture and Marine Science Institute Executive Chairman Tyrell Young revealed he met the facility in the sad state. Bamsey was in shambles when we came into office. And um, upon my arrival, for one, for instance, we had we have seven um, eight tractors at Bamsey. When I came in, seven tractors was um, non-functional. We only had one tractor. We were renting tra tractors locally um, from different entities in North Andres. Three months later, Young says efforts are underway to breathe new life into Bamsey, including new equipment and the restoration of the aquaponic farm. He added that Bamsey, under the supervision of the Ministry of Agriculture, will play a pivotal role in taking the blue and green economies in the Bahamas to another level through modernization of equipment as well as fishing and farming methods. What is planned for those industry is going to really take it to another level and give Bahamians the opportunity to have modernized um, equipment and ways of doing farming and fishing here in the Bahamas. So it's going to really attract a lot of young people into the industry. When asked about the effect of the pandemic on enrollment, the executive chairman described it as a double-edged sword. However, he noted that some Bahamians are taking advantage of classes that are available online. Though numbers are down, Young feels that the added personnel to the admissions department, which previously had just one staff member, will help to boost enrollment. We need Bahamians to come to come and really take advantage of what we what we offer here at Bamsey. It's is is awesome, and it goes a long way. Even if you want to further your studies internationally, some of our credits equals one of our credits in certain departments equals two and three credits um, in other universities around the world. Reporting for our news, I'm Kale Campbell. More than 60,000 people are eligible to cash their votes in next week's local government election. Acting Parliamentary Commissioner Lovato Duncanson says the department has taken all precautions to ensure it does not become a super spreader event. Those guidelines provided to us up to this point are sufficient for us to maintain, to adhere to, uh, as it relates to this most recent uh, situation that we find ourselves in. And so the Parliamentary Registration Department, as it relates to the science and uh, adherence to those guidelines, we will be guided by the healthcare professionals. Duncanson said more than 600 people are nominated for local government positions ahead of the January 27th elections. If we look closely at previous ballots prepared, previous candidates who presented themselves, the numbers of persons who presented themselves for this upcoming local government election exceeds the numbers that were previously uh, provisions would have made, been made for. And so the one thing we can speak to is the candidates, individuals who presented themselves, uh, there appear to be a healthy appetite for service within the local government community. When our news returns, the significance of UB's white ribbon ceremony and it's a wrap on the Great Exuma Golf Tournament. The details when our news returns.
Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight. COVID-19 remains a serious threat. Coronavirus COVID-19 has disrupted our economy, tourism industry, educational system, and put our healthcare facilities and professionals on high alert. Are you prepared? Do you have all the facts? Stay tuned to this network for the very latest news and information on this global pandemic. This is our news. Welcome back. The University of the Bahamas joining forces with two charitable organizations to help raise awareness of gender-based violence. Kale Campbell tells us more. The University of the Bahamas hosted a white ribbon cutting ceremony in partnership with the Bahamas Crisis Center and Rotary Bahamas to symbolize the university's commitment in helping to bring an end to gender-based violence. UB President Dr. Rodney Smith said their aim is to get students involved. This campaign is keen to engage the students of UB and find male allies and forces to join and share the message that violence against women and children is ab abhorrent and wrong. Founder of the Bahamas Crisis Center, Sandra Dean Patterson, opened up about an incident involving a woman who was being abused by her husband in public but received no assistance. Very recently, there was a young woman who was out of her very abusive relationship and had got a temporary protection order and um, the husband continued to stalk her and attacked her on the road and there she was on the road he was beating her and hitting her two young men passed by and she kept saying help 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 and nobody did anything Dean Patterson said the white ribbon campaign is a symbol of men's opposition to male violence against women which started in Canada in 1991 in honor of the 14 women murdered at the University of Montreal in what's known as the Montreal Massacre. So this campaign which has started uh, in Canada now has 80 countries around the world where men and boys are speaking up, speaking out their opposition to violence against women and children. Reporting for our news, I'm Kale Campbell. The Great Exuma Golf Classic wrapping up with an unexpected winner. Marcellus Hall has more in sports. All right, thanks. Welcome to our sports, everybody. I'm Marcellus Hall over in Exuma. Boy, the action has been hot and furious. Going right down to the wire on the final day of competition for the Great Exuma Golf Classic. First day on the PGA Tour and couldn't have asked for a better ending. Let's take a look and see exactly how it all shaped up. Ashe Bhatia, your winner at the Bahamas Great Exuma Classic, which wrapped up yesterday at Sandals Emerald Bay. Bhatia, just 19 years old, shot 7 under par 65 on the final round on Monday to finish at 14 under par for the tournament. And that was good enough for the win. He claimed a $135,000 first place check. Paul Haley was second with a 12 under par performance, with Michael Gellum in third at 10 under par. Bhatia talking about the win. I didn't even think I would get these four starts and you know somehow I fell into a category to create opportunities for the whole year and just to be able to win out here against these players is unbelievable and everything just kind of fell into place this week. Um, my girlfriend caddied me which probably was such a blessing in disguise and you know I wouldn't be standing here without her and it's just it's awesome. And we should mention that Buddy Heald and the Kings did play last night. However, Buddy only played a few minutes. Uh, not sure exactly what happened in that game, whether or not he's got an injury or something. We'll keep you posted on that. And we should let you know as well that Coach Ouellette McPhee and the old Miss Lady Rebels back in action looking to continue their hot streak. We'll give you details on that and so much more coming up for you tomorrow. That's your check on sports. I'm Marcellus Hall. Back to you. Still ahead, Greg is back with the extended weather forecast. Stay with us. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight. COVID-19 remains a serious threat. Coronavirus COVID-19 has disrupted our economy, tourism industry, educational system, and put our healthcare facilities and professionals on high alert. Are you prepared? Do you have all the facts? Stay tuned to this network for the very latest news and information on this global pandemic. You're watching Our News, welcome back. You may need an umbrella this weekend. Oh man, Greg joins us for an extended look at weather. 
thanks again, Kyle, and welcome back, everybody, for our second look at weather. That high-pressure ridge across our area has been dominating us for at least a day or two, but it is slowly sliding towards the east, turning our winds more towards the southeast, bringing in some warm tropical air mass across us. As I mentioned, we have some moisture moving across the uh, area from the Western Caribbean, increasing our rain chances for at least a day or two. Before we see this frontal boundary across the southeastern United States, that should get in here by Saturday, Sunday time frame, increasing our rain chances for the early part of next week. But we do expect a high pressure ridge to build in behind that, so we're looking for some change in the weather once again next week. Boating forecast for the northwest and central Bahamas tonight through tomorrow. Winds will fall off light and verbal tonight, but become southeast to south at 10 to 15 knots tomorrow. Seas two to four feet, your high tide will be at 9.34 tonight. For the southeast Bahamas, that caution fly continues for you guys down there. East to southeasterly flow at 15 to 20 knots. Seas be running four to six feet over the ocean. Here's a look now at your national forecast. A look now at your extended forecast through Thursday. Temperatures warming up ahead of a frontal boundary expected here by the weekend. Make sure you enjoy it. Back to you, Kyle. Well, thank you for joining us for our news tonight. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Kyle Joaquin. Have a great Thursday evening, Bahamas.